Hello and welcome to the McKay Servo I ventilator introduction. The first thing you notice when you look at this ventilator is that it has a large monitor right on top. This is your user interface. It's basically the computer on top where the settings are made and ventilation is monitored. Below that you have your patient unit. It's the lower box. It's part of the vent where the gases are mixed and administered to your patient and we currently have this ventilator set up on the mobile cart that it comes with it carries all your accessories and makes it easy to position the system on the right or left of the patient it has a couple of drawers at the bottom for supplies it is wheeled so you can move it around easily and this vent is designed to be easily transferred to different areas the servo eye can easily be lifted out of the carrier or the mobile unit and it can be mounted on poles, rails, shelves. Um, it can be safely mounted into the servo eye holder on the wall or on the rail of the bed. And to do that, there is a latch on the front of the monitor that you would pull down on the latch, lift the entire monitor out. That can be placed on the side of your bed or anywhere that it needs to go. And on the front of your delivery unit, there's a handle on the bottom that opens up and this whole unit can be lifted out and carried in the holder on your bed or a pole or any other device that it can connect to. While we have this open I'll go ahead and show you we actually have our expiratory filter right here on the front on the top so we can go ahead and pop that out. This can be replaced after it needs to be switched out. After that's done pull up on your handle slides back into position and locks in place. From there, if we turn the unit to the left side, we can see on this side we have our inspiratory and expiratory outlets. And below that we also have a battery bank that's able to hold six different batteries. These can be swapped during ventilation. They can be changed out um, anytime we get an error. So if we need to make a change, we actually push this to the side, push down on it, and swap out a battery, put it back in, locks back in place, and you're ready to go. Simple as that. Turning around to the right side of the ventilator, we notice this is where all of our connections go. So here we have our air oxygen connections. This is actually a connection from the monitor on top and our power connections. Always make sure that we're plugging into a red outlet and make sure that we have all of our connections made before we start our pre-use check on this one. Okay. Next we'll start our pre-use check. Now we're going to begin our pre-use check. I've already plugged our gas sources into the wall. I've also plugged our power into a red outlet so we make sure we have backup power. So now we need to turn on the ventilator. As you can see here, we're looking at the back of the ventilator now, and specifically the back of the user interface. If you look, there's actually a switch down on the bottom right-hand side. That's our power switch. we we'll flip that on. And our machine will start to boot up. slide up here. From here, as soon as it boots up, we get it asking us if we want to do a pre-use check, and we always want to, unless we know that it's been done previously and it's ready to be used. So initially we're going to say yes. We're going to let it start up. I want you to connect the test tube between the inspiratory outlet and the expiratory inlet. So the test tube, see if I can hold it over here so you can see, is this little tube here. It's made specifically for this. So we're going to go ahead and connect it between the inspiratory and expiratory outlets. Okay. From there we'll go ahead and say OK again and let it run its check.
while we're waiting on this to complete just give you a little bit of information on the servo I system is good for invasive and non-invasive ventilation of adult pediatric and neonatal patients um, they can be configured for um, MRI you just have to make sure that you have the proper setup and configuration for it to be available for that they have interchangeable modules um, that can be used on all servo I systems um, you can have an optional CO2 analyzer um, different sensors, electrical activity of the diaphragm, um, different uh, battery modules, expiratory cassettes, all the different pieces there. Plug-in modules and extra batteries can be inserted removed during ventilation. And it has a quick automatic pre-use check of the entire system including the breathing circuit, which is what we're doing now. One or more batteries may need to be replaced. We know that we have some bad batteries in this one. This is an old one, so we're just going to say OK. I want you to unplug the power cord for a moment. Again, it's testing the batteries. Then it says to plug it back in. Now it wants to connect the patient circuit, so we'll remove our test tube. circuit. We'll go ahead and connect to our inspiratory and expiratory outlet and inlet. So we have it all sealed off now. Say OK. And it'll ask if you want to compensate for compressible volume. And yes, we always want to do this. We get accurate compliance and resistance whenever we're uh, running this on a patient. Okay, so now that we've passed everything, we can go ahead and say OK. Ask if you want to delete patient data. So yes, we want to start new with a new patient. Okay, and then it automatically goes into standby. Now that we've completed the pre-use check, we're going to move on to putting in some initial settings. So first off, we're going to start with volume control. And to begin with, with any of these settings on this main screen, you'll notice that we have options for adult, infant, and they run from um, the infant 0.5 kilos to 30, and on the adult side, 15 to 250 kilos. Um, there are different software packages for neonates, non-invasive, um, neurally adjusted ventilation all of those. So at this point what we want to do is right up at the top of the screen here you can see that we have a touch screen that we can bring up our different modes so whatever mode we're in first or currently will show up here if you press on the mode then we get a list of options we're going to start with volume control in volume control we have several different settings here that I'm sure we're familiar with so initially we're going to have our title volume 
we can configure that based on the size of our patient. So let's go ahead and assume we have a patient that we want 600 tidal volume. We're going to make that adjustment. You can use your knob here to make adjustments and push it to select. We also have a respiratory rate which you can use your knob to scroll through your different settings or just touch on them and let's bring this down a little bit. We'll set it at a rate of 12. We also have our PEEP, our FiO2, or O2 concentration. Just to be thrifty I'm going to turn this down to 21. So we'll have room error. We also have an eye time that we can set here. If it'll select, there we go. So after it selects, we can dial this in. If you can see on there, as we're doing this, it will also make changes to this little box up here on the top right. This is a little cheater to tell us what our I to E ratio is going to be with this setting. Um, there's also a minute ventilation based on your rate and volume. And there's also a flow. So if we are at a facility where we want to document our flow when we're doing this, we could set our eye time and then see what our flow is from here. So I'm just going to set it at 1 for now. It gives us a 1 to 2.6 IDE. It also defaults for a T-pause, which is a timed pause. In some of the older ventilators, it would set this so that you could get a plateau but we really don't want to set a pause for every breath. So we want to dial this back down to zero. And if you notice by doing that, it actually changed our IDE as well. Because if we hold a pause on each breath, it's going to make that eye time longer. Okay, moving on. We have our inspiratory rise time. Defaults to 0.15. And it can adjust our flow as well. So if we want it to deliver the breath a little faster, we can adjust this, we can have a higher rise, get a little more flow, or we can dial it back down. This is more for patient comfort, so going with your default is probably fine, at least initially. And we also have a flow trigger that we can dial in. So defaults to 5, which is fine. You can dial it back to 3, as a lot of people like to say. Um, either one will work fine, especially for your initial settings. At the top, you'll also notice that we have our different uh, wave flows. So we have descending pattern that we can actually set. We have a square, which normally is not very comfortable for patients. We also have an auto mode in this one. This particular one for auto mode starts in controlled ventilation and can automatically switch and move around based on patient trigger. So if they're triggering breaths, then it will actually allow them to breathe a little smoother. Um, gives a little safer transitions between the different ones. And it's specific to this ventilator. So the exact way that it transitions will be more um, known by McKay and their servo algorithms. Um, there's not going to be a specific way that we know exactly how much flow and how, how things are changing. Um, if we want to be able to control all that, then we actually need to use one of the set uh, wave flow patterns. So for now, we'll go ahead and use a descending just so we can see it. If we use an auto mode, you'll notice that it gives some extra options as well. So it gives you an inspiratory cycle off percentage time or percentage and then a trigger timeout. So the trigger timeout um, will basically say if the patient's not triggering within a certain amount of time that it's going to go ahead and deliver controlled breaths at that point. Okay, so let's go ahead and take it out of auto mode. We'll just use it this way for now. We've got all our initial settings in. We can say accept. Now we have everything in, but we're still looking at just a setup screen. I'm going to go ahead and connect our test lung to the ventilator. And one thing you have to worry about on this one, or at least pay attention to, is that it still has not started ventilating at this point. We have to make sure that we don't connect this to a patient until we're completely set up and ready and we've already started it. So we're going to push our standby button here. Once we do, it'll start ventilations. Just a moment here to catch up. Okay, now 
Now looking around the screen initially, we're going to see some settings and some uh, things that can be put in here that will go across the board for all the different modes. So we have your um, vent settings control here. We have an auto mode on off. We also can do an admin for the patient so we can actually put in patient information and know exactly who we're working with each time. We have a status button, so it'll tell us the status of our batteries, of our sensors, of everything that we have in here, and when the last pre-use check was done and passed. So if we have a problem, we can go back and look at that. Going along the bottom, we have our fixed knobs here. So in each mode, your basic settings will be set by fixed knobs. They can be set going back into your controls as well. But from here, you could dial in any amount, and it takes effect immediately. There's no need to hit accept, there's no changes, um, there's no additional buttons to, to get those changes to start. You just dial it in and it's done. Also means you have to be extra careful. So it keeps a cover here so that we don't uh, accidentally turn any of these when we shouldn't be. Going along with our other fixed buttons, we also have a start breath, which would be a manual breath here. So if we want to give an additional breath or if they're in a uh, manual mode where they're going to be spontaneously breathing, then we can use this to give a breath. We have O2 breaths, which is our 100% or suction button. Um, we have an expiratory hold and an inspiratory hold. So we can get our intrinsic or auto peep and we can get our plateau pressures from here. Additionally, up here on the top right, we have our alarm silence and our alarm profile. So this would give us our alarm screen. Um, we have saved, so if we want to save data on the screen, we have trends, which can go back up to 24 hours. And we have just an info button, so if there's something specific you're looking for, um, that comes up on the screen. We also have quick access buttons to get to different uh, tools that are built into this one, different loops, different waveforms. We can go to that. Um, we have our full menu, so we can go in and see everything about the ventilator. So if we needed to make changes, um, adjust alarm, uh, details, review different things, we can go there. And then our main screen button, which will just take us back to our main screen here. So on the right-hand side, since we're talking about that, this is your information coming back from your patient, as well as um, any settings that are created from everything that you've done. So. You can go down the list here. We have a peak pressure, a mean pressure, our PEEP. This would end up being our total PEEP versus the PEEP that we have set down here. We have our total rate. We have our O2 analyzed percentage here. We have our I to E that is currently being delivered. Minute ventilation, inspiratory and expiratory tidal volumes. You'll notice the additional values button here. We can do this and get another screen on the side. Gives us some of the same information adds in our plateau pressure here after you've done an inspiratory hold. Uh, PEEP, respiratory rate, O2, um, exhaled minute ventilation. Um, let's see, our inspiratory time, our IDE, um, inspiratory and expiratory minute ventilation, and inspiratory and expiratory tidal volumes. Next screen. Now we can get our total PEEP so we can find out what our intrinsic PEEP is. Um, Static compliance, um, dynamic compliance, resistance, actually has a work of breathing calculation, um, has a few different things in here that can be uh, utilized if your um, facility uses those. Okay, moving over to the other side of the screen. We have an additional settings button here as well. This goes into some of the details that we could set in our um, settings screen. So we have inventory times that we can adjust here, triggers, flow patterns, so all the same stuff that was in our primary ventilator settings up here, but just a little quicker access to get to it. And that's volume control on this one. The machine's still ventilating in volume control right now, so from here we're going to assume that our patient's trying to uh, do some breathing on their own. And we're wanting to let them do a little more spontaneous breathing. So from here, we're going to go ahead and change into SIMV. Go back into our mode screen. We're going to do SIMV with volume control. This one does have options for SIMV in almost every mode. So SIMV pressure control and PRVC. 
We're not going to focus on any of those today. We're just going to go ahead and do SIMB volume control. We're going to go ahead and keep the descending waveform here as well so that we can adjust our own flows and do what we need to do here. So we have our tidal volume still. We want to keep that still as our mandatory volume. Since we're going into SIMB, we're expecting that they're going to do a little more breathing on their own. So let's dial this back down. And just for the sake of letting them breathe a little more, let's turn it down to a rate of about 6. There's no definite answer on this as long as we reduce it enough to allow them to do some breathing on their own. We still have a PEEP of 5. We still have our O2 concentration at 21%. I times can stay the same unless we want to adjust. At this point, you'll notice that you no longer have an IDE available in our box up here, mainly because this is providing for spontaneous breathing, and our IDE is going to fluctuate depending on what they do. So we don't have a set IDE, really, in this case. I'll pause again. We want to make sure it's at zero. Rise time can still stay at the default. Still want to have our trigger, and we get an inspiratory cycle off in this mode as well because there are spontaneous breaths. So we can then set our pressure support above PEEP. So just keep in mind that whatever we set here is the actual amount of pressure support or driving pressure that's being delivered to the patient to create a certain tidal volume. We don't want to include this and PEEP and say we're going to give 15 and 5 of that's going to be PEEP. That's not how this is going to work. We're just going to set it at 10. That's going to be our pressure support above PEEP. And if we have all this in and we're ready, we can go ahead and say accept. Now looking at our waveforms, we can definitely tell the difference between a spontaneous breath and a mandatory breath or assisted breath. Our spontaneous breaths are definitely smaller. So when we're actually documenting this, we're going to document all of our regular values. But we're going to have values for spontaneous and for our mandatory and set parameters as well. So you have to look a little more closely at your readings. It doesn't come up and tell you specifically that you have a spontaneous amount and you have a mandatory amount. So what you'll watch is your peak pressures. So if your facility documents a peak pressure and a pressure support peak pressure, then you would look at it and watch your waveform and see there's an assisted breath, and now we have a peak pressure of 33. So that would be our mandatory pressure. And these other breaths that are spontaneous, we can look at those. There's an assisted and there's a spontaneous. So our spontaneous pressure is 16 and we document that. Same thing with now we have a higher rate, we have a set rate that we document, and we have a total rate. Or if your facility does set rate and spontaneous rate, then you subtract your set from your total. Now moving down, we still have our O2. We have our exhaled minute ventilation. So this would be our primary minute ventilation that we'd want to document. We have an inspiratory and an expiratory tidal volume which in most cases an inspiratory tidal volume is not as important as an expiratory tidal volume. So for now we're going to say that we're going to document the expiratory tidal volume for mandatory and spontaneous breaths since we're in this mode. So again watching your waveforms with your assisted breath right there. You wait until the next breath because right now it's reading exhaled volume so 593 is our mandatory exhaled, and then each spontaneous one, you wait for a spontaneous breath there, and now our next breath starts, and we get our expiratory reading for our spontaneous breath. So 216 would be our spontaneous volume. Now we can hit additional values and go through our next list. Again, we have our peak pressures, and in a lot of cases you could just use this screen for everything you're trying to document. And if we want to do a plateau as well, we can do our inspiratory hold down here. And what will happen is you press and hold it, and it'll give you a plateau pressure. So on a pressure support breath, it, it still attempts to do it. 
doesn't tell us really what our plateau pressure is at this point. So if we wait for an assisted breath and then press and hold, plateau is 24, our peak is 33 at this point. So that would be our plateau pressure that we would want to document. Also gives us our mean pressures, our PEEP, our total rates, um, inspiratory, expiratory, minute ventilation, and tidal volumes. So we could see all those from here. This one also gives a spontaneous minute ventilation down at the very bottom. So if you want to see exactly what you're doing for your minute ventilation, you can document that. And then we have all of our other values here that we talked about before. And this one has calculations for a work of breathing statistic. So we could see that if we wanted to. Resistance, compliance, and we could document those. Now our patient has been breathing on SIMB for a while and we decide that they are well enough and their underlying condition is improved enough that we want to try to let them breathe completely on their own with just a little bit of pressure support. So we want to go into full CPAP with pressure support. So we're going to go back into our mode screen. We're going to select our pressure support and CPAP mode. And from here this is the first time we come into a situation where we can put in our settings and we also have backup ventilation settings. All the others are controlled modes. They assume that they're not going to go apneic in that and you don't have an option for these. Um, the machine controls everything beyond that. So from here, we have our pressure support above PEEP just like we did in SIMV. We're going to dial that back down to 10 since they were doing good before. We've got a PEEP of 5. Oxygen concentration of 21%. Our rise time is still at 0.15. The default inspiratory cycle off percentage is here. And we'll still go with default on that. And then we have our backup ventilation. You'll notice backup ventilation is always in pressure control on this ventilator. So we need to keep in mind what kind of pressures we had previously. So if we were in a volume control mode and we set it at 600 tidal volume, but we know that the peak pressure to get there was around 20. We'll just go with that since it's here. And we know that our rate was set at 12. And our I time, if I remember right, we had it at 1. So we want to try to use our full control settings when we get here. So it's best to either have a documented uh, vent check previously when we were in full control or at least remember what settings we were in so we can go back and put those in here. So once, all we, once we have all these in, we can go ahead and say accept. And now we're in CPAP with a pressure support of 10. And since CPAP has very few settings that actually go in, we only have three uh, direct access knobs available now. We have our pressure support, PEEP, and O2. Again, we have all of our return values here. We could scroll through, see all of our settings, and document what we need to from here. I'm also going to go ahead and show you alarm profile now. We haven't done it in any of the others, but they're all pretty similar. So from here, we have a high pressure limit, or your upper. We have a lower and an upper minute ventilation, or minute volume alarm. We have a high and low rate alarm, and we have a high and low end expiratory pressure, or PEEP, on this one. We also, now that we're in a full um, spontaneous mode, have an apnea time. You don't have this in most other modes on this one. And you always have a sound level, so we can adjust how loud the ventilator alarms. And then it should always be set at 100%. So from here, we can make any adjustments and we can fit these to where we want them to be. Um, pressures, unless they're running high already, generally can be about 10 above what their current pressure is. Uh, minute volume, generally... Two below, four above would be okay, unless they're running in an unusual area and we want it to be a little tighter than that. Respiratory rates, generally 10 to 15 above, depending on where they are as well. Everything depends on your patient. And we don't want to set a respir respiratory rate too low so that it becomes dangerous before it alarms. And our end expiratory pressure, good rule of thumb is two to three above and below what you have set. So now that we have those in, 
and I'll go ahead and adjust a little bit here since we're not quite in that range. Our story rate's at 24, so we'll set it there. We don't want this to be too low so that it's dangerous, so let's set it at 10. Minute volume. Well, we'll just leave it there for now. That's fine. And accept that. So now our alarms are all set and ready to go. So this should be all of your settings for CPAP with pressure support. You notice that I've changed back to volume control here. We've also changed out our lung mechanics on our patient. So we now have a patient that has higher pressures. If we look, we can see that our peak pressure now is running at 37. Um, we have a mean pressure at 10. And if we try to get a plateau pressure, I can push the button. Our plateau is reading at 35 now. In general, we consider that dangerous. We don't want it to be quite that high. So our first thought in most facilities is going to be to try to go into pressure control or a mode where we can uh, better manage that pressure and keep the patient safe. So from here, what we will do is go back into our settings. Since we've already obtained our plateau pressure, we know it's 35, so that gives us a starting point when we go in and look at our um, pressure control settings. So go back into our modes, go to our pressure control section, nope, not volume control, pressure control. Okay, and from here, we start looking to see what we need to set. So pressure control above PEEP. What we want to do generally is take that plateau pressure and dial it down a little bit. So we don't want to put the exact same amount of pressure into the lungs, otherwise we're doing the exact same thing we are now and there's no point in changing. So we want to take that plateau pressure minus our PEEP and that'll give us a good starting point where we can uh, initially see where the patient's going to be. In this case the plateau was 35 minus your PEEP is 30. That's kind of pushing it for actually setting pressure control. If we're trying to limit the amount of pressure that's going to be there, then we're going to be right back where we were. And generally that's the way it's going to work. If you want to make changes, you're normally not going to use the exact same numbers you get from there. You're going to go a little bit below that. But just for example, I'll show you where we start here. Respiratory rate was 12. We'll go ahead and keep that. PEEP at 5. O2 at 21%. I time at 1, again it will give us a I to E since we're in a controlled mode here. So with 1 we get a 1 to 4. Generally when we're changing to pressure control we're also concerned about oxygenation and many times we want to have a tighter I to E ratio. So 1 to 1, 1 to 1 1.5, 1 to 2 maybe. So if that's the case then we'd have to dial this up a bit. I know a lot of people get concerned when you start dialing the I time way up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop it at 1.5. So from there, the other thing that normally comes with this is since we're going to have smaller volumes, or we will end up having smaller volumes because our lung mechanics are worse, we're normally going to need to compensate with that by increasing our rate as well. So I'm going to go ahead and dial the rate up a little bit. Let's say 18 will give me a 1 to 1.2 ratio. If I go all the way to 20, I get a 1 to 1 ratio. So let's go ahead and put it there for now, and then we'll see where we're at. So I'm going to go ahead and accept this. You can definitely tell a difference in the way the machine is ventilating when we have a one-to-one -one ratio. You can also see that our alarms are going to start going off. So I'm going to go ahead and hit alarm profile. One nice thing on this one too is if we're in the middle of making changes, and we know that everything's going off and we're standing right here the whole time making adjustments and monitoring our patient we could go ahead and hit auto set here which will adjust our alarms based on what's happening right now but we never walk away from this until we've adjusted the alarms back to what they should be so we'll go ahead and accept that should at least get our alarms to go away Okay. so now our patient's ventilating Now. 
what I was saying as far as the pressures going in, we set our pressure at 30, then we also have our peep set, so we're still going to have a peak pressure around the same as what our plateau was. So we're reading 36, so we're getting one centimeter water pressure extra from what we have set, which could just be um, the tubing or the calibration was off a little bit, something like that. So at this point, we have a peak pressure of 36, a mean pressure of 20, and our peep's still set at 5 with all of these readings. So this probably is still a little higher than we would want it to be when we're in this mode. If we are trying to protect our lungs, we're not actually going to target the same volume that we did previously. So that's why I dialed the rate up. Now that the rate is up, we're going to have a much higher minute ventilation. And it will allow us to have a much smaller volume to protect this patient. So what we can do is actually go here, dial our pressure control back down. Let's see what it does if we put it at 25 instead of 30. So as we expect, our pressure drops by 5. Our volume drops from 600 to 500. So we're lower, our minute ventilation is lower, um, and, but we're a little safer area. If we really wanted to protect them, we could even drop this more. Pressure control down to about 20. And we get tidal volumes much smaller. We're now down to about 391, 390. So from here, our minute ventilation is going down, but we're compensating by giving a higher rate. As long as our minute ventilations are close to what they were previously, and we knew that that was adequate for our patient as far as a blood gas, then we know we're in a safe range. If we knew that we needed to achieve a minute ventilation of around 10 to keep this patient's pH and CO2 within a normal range, then we would compensate more by going up even more on this rate try to compensate and get that minute ventilation back up closer to what we want it to be. We have to go up even more at this point since we're getting small volumes, so take it up to about 27 and see where we get. From there we also need to go back and check our alarms. So we're actually right at the top of what I set, so if we're set at 27, and we know we're going to be doing higher rates, I'm going to set our upper limit at about 34. Lower rate's probably fine at that. Minute ventilation, we know we want to target 10, so let's bring it back down a little bit. Make it about 14. And make this one about 8. Upper limits of pressure, since we've actually brought it down to 26, let's bring this back down to a little safer range. And since we're trying to control the pressure, we want to know if it starts getting very high. So we're going to set it at 35. And then our peep alarms, we can make about like we did before. So accept. So now, because we've made these adjustments, we know we have a much smaller tidal volume, but we're back to about that 10-minute ventilation that we said we might be targeting. So if we're targeting 10, we're in that range. We may actually be hyperventilating a little bit now that we're a little over 10. Okay. That covers pressure control. Now we're going to briefly talk about some of the advanced modes that Servo, the Servo I has. Um, to begin with, we've got PRVC showing here. PRVC is a combination of the advantages of volume and pressure controlled ventilation. It allows the Servo to deliver the preset tidal volume with the lowest possible pressure. So in this case, the tidal volume is preset with an inspiratory pressure constantly adapting by small increments to guarantee a set volume. So it's going to make adjustments on its own. The flow pattern is a decelerating pattern. Peak inspiratory alarm will determine the highest level of pressure allowed to deliver at that set volume. And it will give a red audible alarm when the peak inspiratory pressure reaches 5 centimeters of water pressure below the set peak inspiratory pressure alarm. So we can dial in our volume and our rate. And in this case, it's pretty important that we make sure that our alarms are set appropriately. Because if not, then we're going to have problems with the breath that actually is being delivered. And we'll definitely need to make adjustments there. So I'm just going to accept that for now. 
it's delivered much more like a pressure control breath with more of a volume uh, guarantee that it's trying to reach. And there we also have a bi-level setting and bi-level or bi-vent excuse me on this one it's called bi-vent uh, the option allows a mix of controlled and assisted ventilation at low and high pressure levels so you have a pressure high a time high a peep which is going to be the same thing as your pressure low and you have your peep time so it goes between two different levels so if we say our high pressure we'll just go with the default here high pressure at 15 peep at 5 high time at 2 low time at 2 our trigger is going to be the same this still allows for spontaneous breathing on both levels so we can still have it and it also provides pressure support um, on your pressure support or pressure support on your high and your peep so if we know they're going to be breathing on their own, we could, say, give a pressure support of 10 at each level. So we do that and accept. So now it's going to increase, hold it for your time period, decrease, hold it for that time period. Now if they spontaneously breathe along with it, they can spontaneously breathe in each, mo each level. So they can breathe in the upper level or the lower level. And you can see that in the waveform. So lower level breaths, upper level breaths. This mode on the servo eye that we're going to talk about here is volume support. Volume support is much like um, CPAP with pressure support. We have a set peep, and we have a set tidal volume that is not um, really the same as a volume control breath. So we have no rate, but with each breath it delivers pressure support to try to achieve that tidal volume that we have set. So it's a pressure support breath with a volume guarantee. So if you notice every time there's a spontaneous breath here, it's achieving a volume of 508, 509, so it's getting there. If we reduce our set volume with each spontaneous breath, it gives a little less pressure support, and it tries to give as little pressure as it can to achieve whatever volume we have set. So with each breath, you notice that the volumes are going down. It's getting close to that 400 mark. And it'll maintain that level. Now again, it's going to be dependent on the pressures of your patient. So if they have very um, low compliance and are not able to actually achieve that volume, then you'll still have issues with it driving too much pressure and it being limited by your setting. So if we crank this way up and we have it set at 700, they take spontaneous breaths, it's trying to deliver that and if we have our upper limit set at let's say 19 and accept that. Notice that we're pressure limited and we're not actually getting the volume that we want because we're reaching our pressures are going too high to get that. So if we dial this back up, say 25, accept that. Our peak pressures are going up now because it's not limiting. and our volumes are starting to go up as well. That's a basic feature that you need to keep in mind for any mode, especially if you're in a volume control, trying to reach a plateau, 
or if you're trying to uh, see how much pressure it's taking to get a certain amount of volume in. If your alarm is set too low, you'll never find out how much pressure it truly takes to get that volume because it'll never achieve that volume. So you may need to dial your pressure alarm um, up a bit just to see where you're at before you change to a different mode. Otherwise, you have no idea where you're really starting at. Okay, that is it for the Servo Eye. Maybe we'll see if I can get another one out soon. Thank you.